right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Polin, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a user's guide for the Canon T6. Now the point of this guide is to make a video that basically replaces your user's manual. You know, the one that you have to read that you probably won't read. What I'm gonna do is go through the very basics of setting up this camera first, from the outside of the body to putting the lenses on, the battery in and the card in, to then going through each menu setting and showing you what I think you should set the menu for and also tell you the pros and cons of each different thing. So starting off right off the bat, let's go over the buttons and how to get started with your camera. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna notice that the lens and the body don't come attached together. And you have to figure out how do I put them together to make sure I can start taking pictures. This is simple. You see this right here? You have this square, it's a grayish white square. And then on the camera, you also have a white square. You're gonna line up the two of them, line them up, and then turn it away from you till you hear a click. That means the camera is now attached, sorry, the lens and the camera are now attached together. That's what you need to do in order to get ready to shoot pictures. That's pretty simple. But another thing is we have the battery compartment down here on the bottom. So here's your battery and in order to put it in, you can only put it in one way. So you can't really mess it up. You don't want to force anything in the wrong way, but the Canon part of it should be facing you. That's the Canon logo and this is the directions or all of the, uh, the information on the back. Canon logo faces you. You just push it in, it clicks in, now you have it going. And then your card, so I have an SD card right here, that goes in on the bottom as well. You can see there's a diagram that shows you how the battery should go in and also how the card should go in. It only goes in one way, boom, pop it in, click it down, it's locked in, shut the door, and you're ready to start taking pictures. So, to take pictures, the first thing you have to do is turn the camera on, that's what this does. Now remember, this is basic. This is basic information, but it's good to watch this because we will get to the more advanced stuff as we go through. This is your mode dial up here. It's gonna start off in auto, the green mode. That is fully auto. If you leave it in this, the camera's going to do everything for you. It also limits certain menu functions, which we will talk about when we get into the menu, how when you switch over to the manual settings, you can actually access more information in the camera. So as you go around the dial, you have the auto mode, but without the flash. Meaning, look, the flash is gonna pop up automatically here because it thinks I need to use it. In a lot of situations where it says no flash photography, say you're at a museum, you're gonna switch off into this mode where it says the flash is not highlighted. It's got that no flash sign. And that means it's still full auto, but the flash will not pop up to give you that flash image. And the rest of the stuff, you have your creative modes right here, creative auto, you have your portrait mode, you have landscape, then close up, then sports, then food is a new mode that they added here. If you like to food blog or take pictures of your food, you're gonna put it into this setting. What these settings mean, and this last one is night portrait, followed by video mode, and then the camera turns in onto video. These are modes that are gonna help you shoot in certain situations. So if you're in, run, I call this running man mode, this is sports mode. If you're in this mode, it's gonna set the shutter speed to a certain point to help you capture motion. These auto modes are a great place to start. I say for the first six months of shooting, just play around in auto, and then you then graduate into more of the advanced modes or into the, the uh, manual settings. Once you start to understand why you move into those settings, you'll unlock the power of your camera, is what I like to say. So then we'll just go through that really quick. You've got P is basically program mode. What do they call it? They call it program AE. Basically, it's your full auto, just it's gonna unlock some extra settings inside the camera for you, which we'll go over a little later. You have TV, which is your shutter priority. That means you set the shutter speed and the camera's gonna go ahead and set everything else for you. Uh, then you get the AV, aperture priority. You go ahead and set the aperture and the camera does the rest of the work. And then you have full manual where you set everything yourself and basically the camera's not doing anything auto. Let's go around some more of the buttons. Right here, you'll notice next to the viewfinder, this plus and minus. Um, well, it's a plus and then it's a straight line, but 
This is your diopter. If you wear glasses or you want to do a correction, you just go ahead and you move this dial up or down while you're looking through the camera. Make sure you focus on something and then move the diopter so you can see if it's perfect for your eyes. Going around the back here, we'll start here. This is your live preview button as well as the record button when you are in video mode. Make sure that you are in the camera mode on the top dial when you want to shoot video. You have a bunch of buttons like the trash can, the quick button, the display, ISO, AF, white balance. Um, you've got the multi-frames. You've got your set, your menu, the playback button. This, will, this is also your Wi-Fi and NFC. So when this is on and it's transmitting data, this is going to go ahead and blink. And when you take pictures, you're going to see that your card is working by a light coming on right here. That is, oh, then we have the zoom buttons. So when you're reviewing your images, you'll be able to hit the plus or the minus to go back and zoom in or to zoom out or to see more images when you're in review. We'll show you more of that when we get to these sections a little later. Right up here, you have a hot shoe. If you're gonna put an external flash or buy another flash, you're gonna go ahead and use this hot shoe to do that, or you could also put LED lights in it or microphones these days, depending on what you're shooting. That's what this hot shoe is for. Around the side, we have this door where you could put in a remote right here. You could also put in a USB cable to transfer files to your computer, and you could also have a HDMI out so that you can playback videos and photos on the TV, or use your TV as one big monitor. So when we come around here to closer to the lens, in the front of the camera, right here you'll see these dots. This is your microphone. That's what's going to pick up the audio. And then right here is your speaker, which is going to play back the audio from the videos that you're playing. Keep in mind, this is pretty small. It's not going to sound the best in the world, but it's also a great way just to have a way to preview your uh, your videos in here in the audio. This button right here is how you take the lens off. You press here, you're going to turn away from you, in this case, how I have the camera, and boom. Here we go. Lining up the white square and the white square. Boom. Lock it in. Now let me take this off and show you something real quick. You don't ever want to touch the mirror or anything inside of this light box inside of the camera. That is super sensitive. You, if, if you knock that out of alignment, you may need to send your camera back in. This isn't anything to be afraid of, though. You just don't want to go in there. Just know that you shouldn't go in there and flip up the mirror. And one thing that happens to some people is they'll see dust when they're looking through the camera, and they'll think that that's going to interfere with their images. It's not. It's on the mirror. When you take a picture, the mirror flips out of the way. So here we go. Let's put this back on. And talk about the lens, lining it up, clicking it in, and on the lens, the 18-55 to 55 lens, you have stabilization. It can be off or it could be on. That's going to help counteract any movement that you have. Up here, you have your AF and then your manual. I leave it in autofocus because I don't manually focus when I'm shooting. It's just much easier to follow the autofocus. Then we come back up to here. You have a dial for changing your shutter speed or controlling your aperture, uh, or a bunch of different menu. You can change your menu settings when you do this. And then this is your shutter button. This is how you hold the camera. Tuck your elbows in, bring the, the camera up to your face, hold the button halfway down to do the autofocus, press it fully to take a picture. It sounds pretty simple, but practice it. Hold the button halfway down. That's how you activate your autofocus. Pressing it all the way is how you shoot it. If you press and you hold it down in continuous shooting mode, you're going to get your multiple frames a second. Then you have this, uh, this lightning bolt right here. This is how you open up the flash when you want to use the flash. Now, it's not going to pop up in the no flash mode, but when we go ahead into the auto mode, not in the auto, and we go into program and we want to hit the lightning bolt, boom, the flash is going to pop up. So that pretty much works us around the outside of the camera, but I'll show you this down here actually. This is your tripod socket. This is how you attach, uh, say, to a, a tripod or a gorilla pod or any stabilizer or any type of uh, tripod or monopod that you have. You're going to go ahead and attach this to it, and that's how you're going to get it stable onto a tripod. And then the one last thing that I want to show you is this is your viewfinder. This is what you look through when you're trying to take pictures. Or if you want to get into live view, you would then see the image or the video, the live preview and also the video preview right here on this screen. I've shown you around the outside of the camera. Now let's take a look at the menu settings and all of the other features.
So if you're looking to get out of auto or unlock the potential of your camera and to start to get better pictures, I have a guide that's just for you. It's the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. If you click over here right now, you can see a free preview to determine if it's for you. It's three hours of unbelievable content that's gonna help you take control of your camera to help you get much better pictures, the kind of pictures that you always thought that you could capture. Well, this guide is gonna help you do that. So we've already talked about the top of the dial. Now I wanna dive in a little deeper, but I wanna also let you know that I'm using an external monitor. That's why you see this thing sticking out right here. This is just so that we can record what's happening on the back of the camera so that we can share it with you. So right now we are in the auto mode and you can see what it tells you. As we switch it to the program mode, you can see that auto settings of shutter speed and aperture, other settings can be configured manually. That gets us into this system. Th this is what you would see on the back of your screen. Now to go through this, you can hit this Q button on the back of the camera. This is your quick button that lets you get into the different settings to change quickly. But what is great is as you arrow down and arrow through, the camera is telling you what each one of these things means, which is an, this is great to have. So for instance, if we wanna change the ISO off of auto, we can go ahead and hit the set button. Once this is highlighted, go in and select a different ISO. Auto is gonna select the ISO that the camera thinks you should be using. 100 is the lowest ISO, and the lower the ISO means the more daylight or the brighter the, the lightning situation you're in needs to be. As you're in lower light situations, you're gonna go ahead and go up to higher, all the way up to 6400, but keep in mind, at 6400, you start to add a little bit of noise and grain to your images. That's just the nature of the higher ISOs. But one thing I recommend is that you go through and you try the different settings, 100 ISO all the way through, just to see what's gonna happen in the different situations. So let's take a look at the quick menu once again. We are in program mode, and I can't select the shutter speed or the aperture, but if I wanted to go ahead and go to the TV mode, it's not actually gonna let you watch TV, but it tells you right here, adjust the shutter speed. Now, how do you adjust the shutter speed while it's selected, is you turn this top dial right here, and you can see that the shutter speed is moving as I make that change. Now, if I hit the Q button again, I can go through the different sections. We can get down right here. We can see the image quality. You can choose the image quality. You can choose the metering mode. You can choose the single or continuous shooting. That's if, or, or timer shooting. And then AI servo is the focus mode. Let's go in here real quick. So we go in here and we've got one shot. One shot is something that you keep on when you are shooting an inanimate object an object where, or, or a person for a portrait that's not moving. That's where you lock the focus in, you'll hear the beep if you leave it enabled. Every time you recompose, you have to press the shutter halfway down to then get your focus back again. But if we go in here and we have AI focus, that's where the camera is gonna determine should it be continuous or should it be using the one shot. And then AI servo is the continuous focus mode that you're gonna use when you are shooting action or something that's moving. And as long as you press the shutter halfway down, and follow a subject, it's going to continually focus for you. So let's get into the AV mode real quick, because the same way that you change your shutter speed in the other mode, you use the same dial to change the aperture. And that's how you do this. And the camera's gonna set everything else in terms of the shutter speed for yourself in conjunction with the ISO that you have set. Again, hit the Q, mode, the Q button. If you wanna go ahead and make a change to the ISO, go over to the ISO and say we want it to be 200 ISO and I think I should hit the up button to jump there. The camera doesn't let you do that. You actually have to arrow backwards to go ahead and do that. So that's just one of the things that it, it, it does. Now when we get into manual mode, you may be asking yourself, well, if I only have one dial, how do I change my aperture? Because right now this is controlling just the shutter speed. And when I'm shooting, I wanna change the aperture in manual. There's this AV button on the back. It also has a plus minus and a trash can. You're gonna hold that and then it automatically jumps over to your aperture and then you can dial through right there. So let's jump back over here into auto mode just to show you what happens when you hit Q. If we hit the Q in the auto mode, you don't have a lot of functions to choose from. You just have 
the ones that you see on the screen. That's because the camera is doing all of the work for you, and if you want to take control of your camera, that's when you go into at least the program mode, which is basically uh, full auto, but gives you all of these other options that you see right here. Let's get back into the auto mode and jump into the menu setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit menu, and this is where I'm gonna walk you through the different options that this camera offers you when you're in auto mode. So as you can see along the top, you have your different menu options. I am turning the top dial and that's changing us through each menu. I use the arrows to go up or I go ahead and hit over and that's, oh, nope, over moves the menu system. I learned something right there. If I want to get into, say, image quality, I go ahead and hit the set button right here in the middle on the back, and you can see that you've got image quality large, and it's also going to show you that how many pictures you would get on the card, and that changes as you go down in quality. Now small, this is the smallest qualities that you could use. I'm not a big fan of using the smaller qualities. I like to shoot, now it's going to save as a JPEG, I want to shoot in at least the largest quality JPEG or I use RAW. As you can see my shirt says I shoot RAW. Now that you have to remember that this is all of the RAW data that the camera takes uh, when it takes a picture. You have to edit each one of these files to then export to a JPEG and if you're just looking to shoot quick photos and getting get them out into the world you may want to stay in JPEG and you just have to decide what setting do you want to use there. Then you've got beep. I like to enable the beep so when I'm in focus in the single focus mode uh, that it beeps when I'm in focus. I like to have that on. Release shutter without card. I like to disable this. I don't want to take a picture if I don't have a card in the camera. Like the old days when I accidentally shot pictures without film in the camera, I wish the camera would have said, hey dummy, you don't have film in the camera, don't shoot. Well, this is a mode that I don't want to have. I don't want to have the card without a card in the camera. I don't want it to take a picture. So I turn that off. Image review. That's how long the image will be on the screen for two seconds. You can change all that. Also, uh, some of this stuff I'm going to go ahead and skip by because I don't think it's super as important as some other things. So let's move on to the the next thing, live view shoot, you have that enabled, uh, AF method, you have for, this is for live view, and then the grid display currently is off, you can change that to on, that's going to give you a grid that's going to basically help you with rule of thirds and composition. Uh, now we're in the playback options, you've got protect images, rotate images, erase images, I don't really delete images from the camera, just in case you accidentally delete something you don't want to delete, save that for later when you're back in the computer. Creative filters, I don't edit images inside personally, but if you did want to have the camera do some creative features, you could go in here, you can go grainy black and white, soft focus, perfect for Steven, fisheye effect, you've got the toy camera effect, you've got the miniature effect, play around with these things, see what they do for you and see if you like what they offer. Uh, going back through, you can rate, slideshow, um, image jump as you rotate, there's not a lot of options here when you're in the auto modes. So here we have the main settings. Auto power off is disabled. You can set this so that it will turn the camera off after a certain amount of time. That's a good function to turn on, especially if you forget to do that. Auto rotate is on. That means when you take a vertical picture, the camera will make a note inside of the image so that it will rotate on the computer so that it shows up vertically. That's great. Formatting card is extremely important. What that means is when you put a new card inside the camera, you want to start it fresh and pair it with this camera. You go ahead and format it, but formatting is going to delete delete everything that's on, on there and wipe it clean. So make sure before you format your card that you've saved all of the images that you've taken prior. You don't want to reformat unless you've already saved those images. File numbering, I do this continuous. There are other options, auto reset, manual reset. I just do a continuous, meaning every time you take a picture, the first one's one, the next one's two, when you take another one, three, so on and so forth, and it will reset at 9,999, it will reset back to one. Uh, select folder, okay, we can keep moving on. We've got LCD brightness, you can change that depending on where you're shooting. LCD off on button, uh, so you can hit the shutter button and that will turn off the LCD. Make sure that you set your time and date, you can select different languages. Featured guide, and then if you, if you have a GPS module that's extra, you can purchase that, you can connect that to the camera. Then you could also enable or disable Wi-Fi NFC. That's if you want to talk to your uh, phone or transfer images to your phone. This is a great option to have. So that's the menu setting for being in auto. So I want to show you something. As you rotate from auto into the more manual settings, including program mode, 
And when you hit the menu button, look what happens. There's a bunch more options up here for you to choose from. Now you've unlocked even more control for you to make tweaks. Now this is for somebody that's getting a little more advanced with your camera. You want to go in and you feel more comfortable. You can start making changes and see the different options that are there, like ISO Auto. You can have it max out at 3200 instead of 6400. That's personal preference. You could also go through here and see different options that you have between aspect ratios, metering, timer, just a lot more options that you can choose from, especially in this wrench mode right here. A lot of different options that you could have, and then moving into my settings, where you can set uh, different functions that you get to more often, you can set them right here for ease of use, for getting to them much quicker. So you can see that there's a lot of different options here. Run through them, read what each one does, and then try them out to see which works best for you. Let me remind you guys that this is a basic overview that I'm doing here. I'm trying to give you the cliff notes, the most important things right off the bat, but you could always dive back into the actual manual to find out more information, but I still recommend going out and trying each setting yourself to see what the cause and effect actually does. So now I want to jump into the live view mode for photos. A lot of people want to shoot in live view and I'll tell you why. I'm going to hit the live view button like this and what happens is you now see a live preview. So you ever see people, you know, you have those point shoots or you have your cell phone and you want to take a photo like this so you're holding it and you can see it on the back of the screen. You'll be able to see the preview of what you're shooting in live view. I don't personally like shooting in live view because it's a little harder to stabilize your image. I like to put my eye up to the camera to hold it, but if you need to shoot in live view because you need to hold this above your head or hold it lower, you can do so. So right now I'm in program mode. And again, the Q button still gets you into different settings. So for example, this one says set single or continuous shooting. You can go in there and do continuous shooting. You could do self timer. You could also do self timer two seconds. And then you can also change how many shots it it would take during the self timer, meaning it could take two, it could take three, it could take seven, eight, nine, look at this. It could take up to 10 pictures in a row when the timer ends. So we're gonna go back here, let's hit the, let's select this for single shot. Oh yeah, if we wanted to do continuous, we would then select continuous and as we held down the shutter button, it would take multiple pictures in a row. If we were in single, every time you press the button once, it would take one photo and that's it. You've got your auto white balance. I personally set white balance to auto. Uh, this is your picture style. Let's see what happens. Right now it's on auto, but you have a bunch of different ones. You've got standard, you have portrait, you have landscape, neutral. You can see the changes actually happening here. Faithful, monochrome, I don't recommend shooting photos in monochrome. Remember that if you're in JPEG mode and you take a picture in monochrome, it's only going to save it in black and white. It will not save the color data. But if you do shoot raw, it will save the color data. So you can also set your own user defined. This is for picture styles. This is something that you guys want to go ahead and play with yourself. Uh, if you wanted to change the image size, you could do that also. And then you have ISO, either auto, or you could go through the other one. Say you're at 6400 and you want to go back to 200, still can't do it. Just have to go ahead and arrow through to make the changes just like that. And then, let's see, I want to focus. I'm holding the button halfway down. It's going to focus right there. You hear the beep. Because I'm in single focus, I would then take a picture because it's locked in. And that is a nice function to have, the beep on. Boom locked in, take the picture, also stabilize yourself. I still am a big fan of holding the camera just like this, but that is pretty much it for live view as it pertains to photo. But let's look through the display. When you hit display, you can see something changes. That's your histogram. You can watch as the levels change of a histogram. The quick way to understand this is that you want a nice spike right in the middle. That's gonna tell you that your exposure is more proper. Uh, hitting it, now you have just the full view of this with no other settings on the back of the screen. And then you have some more settings down there. You can see auto ISO. Also, you have your battery power. And then we're back to the main one, which is the one I like to use because I have all of my settings right there. So that is live view as it pertains 
to shooting stills. So you've taken a bunch of pictures and now you want to see them. How do you review them? Simple. You have this play button right here on the bottom of the camera. You go ahead and press it and now you can go through and use the arrows to cycle back and forth through an image. You could also hit the display button to see different information like how the, how the image was shot, uh, what ISO was used. You can do all of these different things by hitting the display button. But say you don't want this photo, you don't like it, you can hit the trash can and you can hit erase. I'm not a big fan of doing this in the camera. I mean, yes, it's simple, you can erase it. I rather see it all in the computer later, especially with memory cards being able to store so many photos, you don't need to clear up that much space. So if you don't wanna erase it, go ahead and hit cancel. Uh, you wanna zoom in on the image to check focus or something, you hit this zoom button back here, it's the one on the right in the very back by your thumb, and it lets you zoom in, and then you can cycle through the image by just using the arrows. And then to zoom back out, you go back the other way, and then if you go even further, you can see checkerboard so you can get more images to show up on the screen. To cycle through, we hit the arrows, we go through the different images, boom, you can see that. If you had videos here, you would see those as well. Here's another thing, if you hit the Q button, you have different options like, I want to protect this image, I could hit enable. Now these options are here, they're not really things that I go into often. Rotate images to change the display orientation. Uh, I don't really start, I don't do a lot of this stuff in the camera, but you could turn your creative filters on and play with that. If you wanna go ahead and do the creative filters in here, don't forget you have Wi-Fi and NFC, so you can make the changes here, save the image as an extra copy, and then you could send that out to your phone to share with the rest of the world. That could be a good option for using the creative filters. That really is going through the back of the camera. It's pretty simple to arrow through, it's pretty simple to delete, zoom in, and see the different information that the camera gives you. So you want to shoot video? Well, this camera does allow you to shoot HD video. How do we get into that mode? We go ahead and turn the top dial into the video looking camera thing. It's on a tripod and that gets you into video mode. You're going to hear the mirror flip out of the way, which is going to expose the, C, uh, the CMOS sensor underneath. And that's how you get the live view that's going on your screen right now. So here we are. You can see the different settings that you have on the screen. You could hit the display mode to go ahead and cycle through all of the different things that you have. Uh, if you use the Q button, once again, it will show you all of the different options that you have, whether it's autofocus, you can see right here, live mode, AF quick. You could also go down here and change your white balance or you could change the picture styles just like we did for the still images. Remember, if you do it in monochrome again, that would mean that you're gonna record only in black and white. You have this mode here for the standard autocorrect image brightness and contrast. Well, that's something I just leave probably on standard. And this is where you change your shooting mode uh, in terms of quality. You've got 1920, this is your HD at 30 frames a second. You have it at 24 frames a second. Say you wanted to do more, get more of that cinematic look, the 24 frames a second option is going to do that. Then you want 720 at 60 frames a second. This is if you wanted to slow something down later to do slow motion, you would do that. But remember, it's only at 720 and not 1080. And then you have the super small one that I probably would never go into, the 640 by 480. I personally wouldn't do that. I usually stick around the 24 frames or the standard, which is the 30 frames. And keep in mind that you get 29 minutes and 59 seconds of record time. So when you hit the record button, which is back here on the how you got in the live view, you would hit that, the camera would start recording, and you get a continuous 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Now what happens at the end of that? Well, it will stop recording, and to start recording again, you go ahead and press that button, and you'll get another 29 minutes and 59 seconds. So it's pretty simple. You see what you get on your screen, you go ahead and you hit record, and then you are shooting shooting video. So let's jump into the video menu real quick. So the video menu is separate from the stills menu. Only when you're in video mode will you get this menu option. So you can see all the different options you have. Movie exposure, you could do that auto. The camera's going to do all the work for you. Uh, as we go through, you can see some of these different things, highlight priorities. I really don't mess with this too much. I just let the camera do most of the work itself. You could also change the same settings back here, the 1920 by 1080 at 24, the 1280 by 720 at 60, and the 640 by 480 at 30. Uh, as you go here, sound recording, you could do auto, or you could also manually go ahead and set that yourself. If you're outside and it's very windy, you could enable the wind filter. It's going to counteract the wind a little bit. Go ahead, we do that auto, and we're going to go back into the menu. Metering timer, 
eight seconds. We got the grid display off. You could also put that on. That could help you as well. As we arrow through, you got your exposure compensation, auto light optimizer, uh, picture style we talked about. Keep in mind that the picture style that you choose will be the picture style that your video will end up looking like. So if it's vivid, then you're going to get a more vivid video. If you wanted to leave it a little flatter, you could do the standard right here, and then you could do some corrections after the fact, or you have three user-defined modes that you could set to set your own style of picture control. That's great that you have those options. Right here, you've got uh, image quality if you're going to shoot stills, because you can still shoot stills in between shooting video. It would interrupt the video when you press the button. You're going to take a picture, and it's going to save that. Same playback options. Um, auto power off is disabled currently. These were the same options that you saw when you went through the original menu. So this is pretty simple, guys. You have your menu for video, you have your live view for stills and video. So that's pretty much it. That is a quick overview of getting started with your Canon T6. It's very simple to do, but remember, you still have the user's manual. You can always refer back to that to get some more information, but I want to leave you with a few quick tips before we wrap this up. One of those is get an extra battery. If you're going to go on vacation, make sure that you have at least two batteries, just in case one, you use up all the battery power, or two, you need another one to keep shooting longer. And speaking of shooting more, memory cards. Memory cards are pretty in inexpensive, so make sure you have one or two or three or four memory cards. If you're going to take a lot of photos, if you're going to take a lot of video, it's going to chew up more of your memory card. So those are some basic things along with how to hold your camera better is put your hand underneath like this, tuck your elbows in, put it close to your eye, and you're going to get a more stable image. That's pretty simple. So those are just the basics. This is a basic run through of using your Canon Rebel T6. I hope you enjoyed it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya. So if you're looking for more fun and informative videos around photography and being a creative, well, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here on YouTube because I have over 2,000 videos that are free that are going to help you learn more.